Hi, I'm Dave Cady, the food dude, and I'm in the mood for homemade pasta. To get it, I drove up to Stillwater and I visited the Ranchers Club, which is known for steaks and chops. Inside, on the OU, OSU campus, it's right next to the Atherton Hotel. At the Ranchers Club, you'll find Chef Chris Becker, who came here from Mario Batali's restaurant in New York City, where he learned to make pasta. He's making homemade pastas daily at the restaurant. Here's how it looks. All right, well, we have this great machine uh, that came from Italy. It's all handcrafted out of all these uh, really great metals, and it's a brass die, uh, which gives a more rustic texture to the actual dough as it's being extruded. Um, I use organic durum flour, and that's a hard wheat flour, which makes excellent pasta uh, in this style. And then the nice thing about the machine is it also has another hopper where it can go through um, the rolling attachment, so you can sheet the dough and do a uh, hand cut tagliatelle, and you can do stuffed pastas and filled. Uh, so it's a really, really great little machine. Now tell a little bit about how, how on earth did you get interested in making pasta? Uh, well, I spent, um, after graduating, I went to New York City and started working for this chef known as uh, Mario Vitale. Heard of him. Right. Um, and so he's really big into Italian food and, and one of the foremost authorities on Italian cooking and cuisine in America. And so I spent uh, about three years at his restaurant Lupa, uh, which is a little bit more of a rustic trattoria. Uh, and I spent about a year on the pasta station and there they do dry pasta. Uh, where you kind of take the, the dry pasta and you cook it in the tank and we did all of ours to the pickup. Uh, so it wasn't any sort of pre-cooking, uh, it was all to the order when the tickets come through, you're there with the pasta machine cooking it and I can show you the pasta machine which is back there and I have one here. Um, then I went to Del Posto when that opened and uh, was charged with the uh, pasta department and so we started really developing fresh shapes and handmade pastas and so every piece of pasta has gone through somebody's hands and every piece that's made uh, was made with intention and with regard to the product. Uh, and so it was really there where I developed a passion for the pasta and, and really became, um, you know, what's, what's the word, attracted to it. Uh, and it really, really became something that I felt very passionate about. Talk to me a little bit about saucing pasta and the importance of it. Okay. Uh, well, there's different schools of thought, and what I learned from both Mario Vitale and, and Lydia uh, was that pasta is intended to be dressed like a salad. It's supposed to accompany the pasta. So when you're taking a high-quality ingredient that you've made, um, and you've spent all that time forming the pasta and working with the pasta, that it's a shame to drown it out with a sauce and for it to become more of uh, like a piece of bread that's supposed to sop up the sauce. Um, so the balance between the sauce and the pasta are just as important to the time and effort that it goes into making the pasta as it does the sauce. Uh, and so both of them are really supposed to complement each other and work together with each other. Awesome. Now, you make a lot of other things here too. Tell me a little bit about the cured meats that you've got. Okay. Um, so this really started off with uh, Cushon when they came into town and we got some mangalista, uh, which is a variety of pig, very, very fatty. And so I took those legs and salted them down. Uh, and it's been almost a year um, of salting and aging and drying and, and that. Um, and I get uh, Brookshire pork from a farmer up in Tulsa uh, who has really, really a great product. And so I started taking the jowls and curing those and turning that into guanciale or, or a type of Italian bacon. Uh, and then I have um, some hams of some baby Berkshire pigs, which I just got last Friday, that have been salting um, for about four and a half days now, so I can show you those as well. Awesome. Now, you talked about you know, getting pigs locally. I know local ingredients mean a lot to you. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, one of the things that I really walked away from in, in New York was the sense of freshness and produce and seasonality and following uh, really the essence and the heart of, of what um, Italian cuisine is, is taking the freshest ingredient and simply preparing it and not getting too, too in the way in, in the ingredient and letting it shine for what it is. Uh, and so that essence and that, that approach to food and cuisine is something that I've carried with me. Uh, and so that reflects in, in, in getting local pigs and getting baby pigs and doing multiple different things with them. And so what uh, I've started doing here is uh, tasting menus. We're doing five course tasting menus and one is a seasonal tasting menu. And that seasonal tasting menu um, sort of focuses on more recognizable proteins and uh, different uh, garnishment to go with it. And it's a more natural progression kind of traditional style. And then the other one is the chef's tasting uh, where I take one ingredient uh, and it was previously the duck and do five different things with it. And so um, I just changed the menu yesterday and now we're doing the baby pig. Um, so I'm starting off with three different types of cured meats, uh, some lardo, which is fat back that's been cured uh, for about 10 months. 
uh, testa, which was the head of the baby pig, uh, that was brined and slowly cooked and kind of packed into a mold and thinly shaved. Uh, and then the other one is what's called uh, kind of cooked ham. Uh, so salted ham leg that's been braised in, in white wine, uh, served with some pesto. And then a type of potato and uh, smoked bacon soup um, as a second course. And then a, almost a bolognese or a, a meat sauce for, for the pasta. Uh, and then I end with uh, porchetta, which is essentially sausage that's been wrapped in bacon and slow roasted for about eight hours uh, with different petite veggies. That sounds great. Now, all that sounds great. Of course, Ranchers Club, Chop House too. I mean, talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, well, it's what it is, is it's, it's the restaurant. It has the grill. It has the steaks and all these things. But there's so many more meats that encompass what, um, what the Ranchers Club is and... Um, different game meats and mm -hmm. rabbit and the pig and the duck and little petite birds like pheasants and uh, lamb and goat and um, progressing on into April and May mm -hmm. when it's it's baby goat season and baby lamb season featuring some of those items as well uh, through the tastings and probably utilizing that big old grill back there <laughs> uh, for a lot of the grilling but we use um, prime quality beef out of Creekstone Farms which is on the Oklahoma Kansas border a really great black Angus product uh, just try to use the best that we can get. Uh, awesome. Sounds great. Area.